What's up guys, it's River, and today we're looking at my top five Canon cameras. Canon cameras are known for having fabulous colors, an impeccable build quality, and of course, the best user experience of any camera brand. So if you're planning on getting a Canon camera, here's my list starting from the beginner all the way up to the professional heavy duty ones. So let's do a deep dive, figure out exactly what each camera does, exactly who it's for, and of course, what camera is right for you. Let's get into it. And before we jump into the video guys, just quickly want to say thank you so much for all of your lovely comments. They genuinely make my day, especially this time of the year. So thank you. And all of the products that we discussed today will be down below in the description. So be sure to check that out. Let's get into the video. All right guys, so the first camera on the list is actually the best selling DSLR. And in my opinion, the perfect casual and beginner camera. It's the Canon T7. It has all the features you would want from a Canon camera at a very affordable price. It has a 24 megapixel sensor, which is the same sensor that you find in Canon's more expensive cameras like the Canon 80D. And despite this camera being an entry level camera, it still does 14 bit raw. Plus this camera comes with a pretty decent kit lens, the 18 to 55. It's a pretty good lens for someone that's just starting out or someone that just wants to casually capture their life. As for photos, the camera shoots at three frames per second in continuous autofocus. Now that's not quite fast enough to get action shots, but if you're just casually shooting your kids on vacation, capturing landscapes, you should be more than fine. As for video, in full HD, it does 24 and 30 frames per second. And if you want a little bit of slow-mo, this camera also does 60 frames per second, but only in 720p. As for autofocus in this camera, it's pretty basic. The autofocus in photo mode works just fine and you should not have any issues. But when it comes to video, the autofocus is pretty bad. The autofocus tends to struggle quite a bit in video, and if you're gonna be shooting video on this, I would recommend changing the focus yourself. However, Canon is actually known for having really good autofocus. The issue is just the fact that this is an entry-level camera. If you want better autofocus, I would recommend looking into the Canon T7i or the Canon SL2, which I'll talk about at the end of this section. As for build and design quality, it is exactly what you would expect from a Canon camera. The ergonomics are great, the buttons are all exactly where they need to be, the software is easy, simple to understand, and you could give this camera to literally anybody and they can figure it out. This camera's probably less complicated than my iPhone. If you can work a smartphone, you can definitely figure out this camera. And one thing I was pretty surprised by, the battery is pretty decent. It's about four to six hours on a single charge. So the Canon T7 is a really good camera, but some of you guys might want a little bit more horsepower and a few extra features. If you're looking to mainly do video and you want better video features, I recommend looking to the Canon SL2. That camera has dual pixel autofocus, which is better for video, though that camera does not have the best photo autofocus. And the Canon SL2 also has 60 frames per second at full HD. And on top of that, it also has a flip out screen, which is just way easier for making videos. If you're looking for a camera that does better photos, the Canon T7i is probably for you. It has all the features that I mentioned in the Canon SL2, plus it also does six frames per second as opposed to the Canon T7's three frames per second and has 45 points of autofocus. Regardless of what camera you choose, these three cameras will not let you down if you're a hobbyist or a beginner. And the next camera on the list is the Canon M50. It's still very affordable and great for beginners. However, it's not a DSLR. This is actually a mirrorless camera. Some people want the feel of a DSLR. They want that nice chunky camera in their hands. But if you're okay with using a mirrorless camera, in many ways, this is way better than both a Canon T7 and a Canon T7i. This camera has a 24 megapixel sensor, the same one in the Canon T7i. But where this camera differs is that it has a newer and better imaging processor. As for photos, it does 14-bit RAW and it does 10 frames per second in single focus mode and 4.5 frames per second in continuous shooting. And the biggest place that you'll probably see the difference between this and the Canon T7 is the ISO and the noise levels. Because this has a newer image processor, you're going to get much cleaner images at higher ISOs and much cleaner shadows in general, whatever ISO you're shooting at. As for video, you get both 24, 30, and 60 frames per second in full HD. And you get 120 frames per second in 720p. And this camera does have 4K at 24 frames per second. However, that 4K does come with a 1.7 times crop. Personally, I don't like the crop because you're throwing away most of your sensor, but it's a really good way to get more range out of your lens. By switching into 4K mode, suddenly your lens gets twice as close and then you can still zoom in further into your 4K image. So if you're really far away from something and you wanna get a bit closer, the 4K is a really good hack. But if I was getting this camera specifically for 4K video, 
I would probably skip it. One thing I love about this camera is the phenomenal autofocus. For a little bit more than the price of the Canon T7 and a lot less than the price of the Canon T7i, you get Canon's dual pixel autofocus. This gives you tack sharp autofocus in both photos and great face tracking and object tracking in video. However, that autofocus does not work in 4K. Like I said earlier, if you want this camera for 4K, I would probably skip it. As for the ergonomics and design, the camera is really well built and has a really premium feel to it. This camera is much smaller than a Canon DSLR, so you do miss out on the robust feel. However, this camera has a way more premium feel than a Canon DSLR. All the buttons have a sandpaper finish on them and the actual body of the camera feels very sleek and modern. Personally, I prefer the design of this camera over the Canon T7. As for software and menus, it is the same great experience that you get from all Canon cameras. One thing that really makes this camera stand out is the flip out screen with touch controls. And that touch screen is phenomenal. It is as good, if not better, than your smartphone. So who's this camera really for? I'd recommend this camera to anybody that's a beginner or a casual photographer because it is such an affordable camera. Also, I love the flip screen on the back, which makes it an awesome vlogging camera. And it's super convenient to be able to see yourself in that flip screen and just tap your face to catch focus. And next, we're moving into our mid-range cameras. These are cameras meant for people who are really enthusiastic about their photography or filmmaking or even professionals. And next up, we have the Canon 90D. This camera is really interesting because it was designed from the ground up with filmmakers in mind. This camera would be great for someone that's making documentaries, educational content, vlogging, anybody that needs a semi-professional camera with that classic Canon look. The Canon 90D has a 32 megapixel APS-C size sensor, which is actually really high resolution for that sensor size. As for photos, it does 10 frames per second, which is pretty impressive considering the fact that it's a 32 megapixel sensor. But video is where it really shines. For video, it does 24 all the way up to 60 frames per second in full HD, and it has a specialty mode where it allows you to shoot 120 frames per second for super slow motion. And this camera does do 4K without a crop, which is a huge deal and actually a first for Canon. It does 4K at both 23 frames per second and 30 frames per second. The really impressive part about these specs is that it gives you all of this without asking you to sacrifice anything. Usually in cameras, when you go into slow motion, you have to sacrifice something. When you go into 4K, you have to sacrifice something. But this is the first time I've seen Canon do a really good camera and not ask you to sacrifice anything. This is a camera that I would wholeheartedly, without any hesitation, recommend to a filmmaker or a video creator. The only thing that stops this camera from being perfect is a cinema profile. However, it's not that hard to install CineStyle or a ProLost image profile. If you guys do want to learn how to install that, check out my video specific review of the Canon 90D on the main channel. And I do teach you guys how to install cinema profiles in this camera. And the one thing that I absolutely love about this camera is the enhanced dual pixel autofocus. Because of the newer image processor in this camera, you really get to make the most out of that autofocusing system. For photos, it is fast and reliable and you will never miss your shot. When it comes to video, it does an impeccable job with both face tracking and object tracking. And it is something I could easily recommend for documentary shooters or someone that's in a fast paced running gun environment. This camera doesn't have any built-in stabilization, which would come in really handy for running gun and vlogging. However, Canon tends to put all their stabilization in their lenses, so make sure you have a stabilized lens if you need some of that. But what really sets this camera apart is the design. This camera was designed with filmmakers in mind, and it does little things right that make a huge difference for filmmakers. For example, it has a flip out screen that comes out to the side, the touch screen is impeccable, you can touch the autofocus, which is great, but a lot of the times that side flip out screen will often hit your mic jack and dislocate your mic jack but they have made sure that that flip up screen is just the right distance away from your mic jack so your flip up screen never hits your mic jack. And in the long run, if you're doing some intense shooting, that little thing can make a huge difference. On top of that, the body itself is nice and robust. You can get a really nice grip on it, which helps you balance and stabilize your camera that much more during documentary or running gun shoots. And another thing that I absolutely love about this camera is the LCD screen on top. I can look down, see my shutter speed, aperture, ISO, drive mode. This way I know for a fact that I'm never messing up any of my settings. And if I'm ever unsure during a shot, I can look down and double check. Also, the 90D comes with an 18 to 135 kit lens. Not only is that an impressive focal length, but that lens is also very sharp and very, very good. It will more than get the job done. And last but not least, this camera uses the LP6 battery, which is Canon's best battery. It will easily give you four to five hours of continuous shooting, if not an entire day if you're efficient with your battery. At the end of the day, this is one of Canon's best cameras. You get an APS-C sensor that is extremely high resolution. You get all the frame rates you want. You get an amazing focus mode. And honestly, there's nothing about this camera that I don't like. 
And considering everything this camera offers, the price point is very attractive. And now we're moving into our high-end cameras. These are cameras that are made for the hardcore enthusiasts and of course, professionals. Next up, we have the Canon 5D Mark IV, which for the longest time was Canon's best video camera. The Canon 5D Mark IV features a 30 megapixel full frame sensor. If you're doing any kind of professional work, I highly recommend switching over to a full frame sensor. Because of that larger sensor, you get less noise, more detail, and more dynamic range. All the benefits come from simply capturing light on a bigger piece of glass. This camera does seven frames per second in continuous focus mode. Now that may not seem like a lot, but remember that you're capturing a full frame sensor, which is double the size of an APS-C size sensor, and it's also 30 megapixels. As for video, it does full HD from 24 all the way up to 60 frames per second, and it does 120 frames per second, sadly, in 720p. But the HD in this camera is more than meets the eye. What the camera actually does, it takes a full 4K image, super samples it down to 1080p. So you actually get an image that is as detailed and as sharp as a 4K image, but you get it in a 1080p container. This camera does do 4K at both 23 and 30 frames per second. However, it does that with a 1.7 times crop. And as I mentioned earlier, that crop is not ideal. Unfortunately, this camera uses Motion JPEG or H.264 to record its videos, which really aren't ideal simply because they take up so much space on your card. CF cards are not cheap, neither are hard drives, and if you're going to be shooting with this camera constantly, you're going to use up a lot of hard drive space. But if you do end up using this camera, make no mistake, you are going to get absolutely gorgeous images. I would only recommend this camera to somebody that wants the robust design of a DSLR in their video camera. If not, the next camera after this is probably perfect for you. And let's talk about the next part of this camera, the autofocus. This camera has Canon's dual pixel autofocus, which is fabulous in both photos and video. Much like the 90D, the Canon 5D Mark IV is going to give you amazing results. When it comes to photos, the autofocus is fast and reliable. When it comes to video, the face tracking is super Superb, and the camera keeps pace with modern cameras. Despite being a slightly older camera, the autofocus in this camera will not let you down. One thing I really appreciate is the touch autofocus. I tend to shoot a lot of people and it's really convenient to simply touch the person's face and know you have focus. The only thing I don't like about the camera is their implementation of C-Log. C-Log is Canon cinema profile and initially when this camera came out it did not have C-Log. They ended up adding C-Log into this camera almost a year after it came out. Unfortunately, because this camera wasn't designed with C-Log in mind, I find C-Log tends to be really noisy, and unless you shoot at exactly 800 ISO, you really don't get the best results out of it. But like I said, the next camera on this list is probably what you're looking for. And you might be asking yourself, River, why am I gonna get this camera? Because of the design, my friend. This camera is impeccably designed. One of the reasons that I shoot with Canon DSLRs, despite having a RED camera, is the fact that their bodies are so robust and well built. This camera is extremely well designed when it comes to ergonomics and build quality. When it comes to build quality, there is no one like Canon. I don't anticipate there being a zombie apocalypse anytime soon, but if I needed to fight my way through a zombie apocalypse, I could easily do it with this camera. These things will last through anything. When it comes to ergonomics, this camera is super well designed. The buttons are literally all in the right place. I always feel like the camera is like an extension of myself. I love shooting on the 5D Mark IV. And the next camera on the list is the Canon EOS R. This is actually Canon's first mirrorless full frame camera. It shares most of the internal specs of the 5D Mark IV, but in a mirrorless style body with a few added benefits. If you don't need your camera to survive the apocalypse, this is definitely a better deal than the 5D Mark IV. The Canon R features a 30 megapixel full frame sensor, much like the 5D Mark IV. However, it is not the exact sensor. Canon has actually made a bunch of improvements. And one of the biggest things to note is that this camera has the all eye codec, which is Canon's professional grade codec. They are no longer using motion JPEG like they did in the 5D Mark IV. This is a much more efficient codec that is made for video editing. As for photos, this camera does 14 bit raw, 8 frames per second in single shooting mode and 5 frames per second in continuous focus mode, which is only slightly better than the 5D Mark IV. As for video, it does 24 all the way up to 60 frames per second in full HD. And the full HD video in this camera is also super sample, just like the 5D Mark IV. But a huge upgrade that this camera has is that the Canon R has 14.2 stops of dynamic range, whereas the 5D Mark IV only had 12 stops. Two stops of dynamic range may not sound like a lot on paper, but it's actually quite a bit. That's the difference between having your lens at f2.8 versus f4. That is a huge difference. This camera also does 4K at both 24 and 30 frames per second, and sadly, it does it with a 1.7 times crop. You guys already know what I'm gonna say. I don't like it.
But then again, I'm really not buying Canon cameras for the 4K, I'm really buying Canon cameras for the color science and the build quality. And a major feature of this camera is that it comes with C-Log in 10-bit color. Because this camera was designed with C-Log in mind, it has very low noise, it is extremely clean, and the implementation is exactly what I would expect in a professional camera. And you guys must be getting tired of me talking about Canon's autofocus, so I'll be brief. It's amazing, dual pixel autofocus, every day, all day. Next, let's talk about design because that is probably one of the most important things about this camera. The build quality in this camera is fantastic and I was not disappointed. The industrial design feels very sleek and modern. I love the way the camera simply feels. However, I don't love the ergonomics in this camera. Because it's a smaller camera, you do lose a lot of real estate on the back of the camera and I personally miss the feel of the old school Canon DSLRs. The button placement on this camera is not ideal and simply switching between photo and video mode can be kind of a hassle. Also, this camera features something new for Canon cameras, a slide bar. And at first it sounded exciting, but upon further review, I kind of hated it. The features that you would want to map out to the slide bar, you really can't. And the most exciting thing I was able to do with it was change my white balance and tap the left and right side of it to switch between sp specific ISOs. To be honest, I think it would have been better if they took out the slide bar, made the camera cheaper, or added different buttons to it. However, there is one big benefit from switching to a Canon mirrorless camera, and that is the Canon RF lenses. Canon said that these lenses were revolutionary, and I don't think they were kidding. These lenses are absolutely amazing. Also, these lenses come with a third ring besides your focus and zoom. I personally like to call them speed rings, but you can map different functions to that speed ring. You can have it change aperture, ISO, white balance, whatever have you, just to make it more efficient. That way you don't have to pull your face away from the camera. And sometimes that five seconds is the difference between getting the shot and missing the shot. Overall, I think this makes a fantastic commercial photography camera and also a really good camera for video, if you're a cinematographer, I would not hesitate to pick up this camera. The only thing that holds me back with this camera is the ergonomic design. But this camera has so many good things going for it that I feel like I can ignore the ergonomic design. Also, if you like the Canon R but you don't want to spend quite as much, the Canon RP is the little brother to the Canon R and I highly recommend checking it out. It's a little bit slower when it comes to photo speeds and it does not have C-Log. However, it has the same fantastic autofocus, the same fantastic color science, and if you want that Canon HD look, I would not hesitate to pick up this camera. And right now it's only about $900, although that is not cheap by any means. All right guys, that wraps up our video on the best Canon cameras. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, hit me up in the comments down below and I'll make sure to help you guys find the right Canon camera for you. And as always, all of the cameras that we discussed today will be down below in the description, so be sure to check that out. Last but not least, make sure to leave the video a like if you enjoyed it. It really helps the channel out and make sure to subscribe for future content. Until next time guys.